I don't think anybody's going to try to use this because it's very hard to control, but it technically can get you long distances in the air. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of a, bl a, a boom method, right? What's up, people? I'm Zoe back on Halfway Modded. So we're here doing things. There's this thing here. We're going to get to that and all of the stuff over to the right. Now, first and foremost, we were doing some things yester yesterday, last episode, that revolved around uh, these guys down here. Okay? And I told you I had a design in mind. Some stuff that I kind of wanted to do with... I fell in a hole. Kind of wanted to do with these guys. And we're not going to get to that today. Um, the basic idea... Of what's going on lately is that I have spent a huge amount of time on mob back stuffs. Um, now that it's released, I don't know, I feel like I have to keep it up to date. That I have to make it good. It's already good, but I feel, I don't know, I just keep adding things. And I need to stop adding things because I think it's done. I think I'm finished, well, not finished, but you know what I mean. I think I'm done adding things. But anyway... Today's episode is going to be nothing but an update episode. What I'm going to try to do is, uh, over the past, I don't know, however long, I have been doing um, videos every other day in this place. Every other day is a video. I'm going to try to throw an extra episode in tomorrow. I'm going to try. No guarantees, but I'm going to try. And that way... You don't really miss out on any progress. For those of you who don't really care about the mod pack stuffs, you can kind of skip it. If you really, really don't care, I think we're going to have a lot of really, really cool stuff in this episode. But this is going to be a bunch of up updates. Uh, I guarantee all of the stuff over to the right is going to take me all episode. It's going to take a while. Uh, so I just wanted to show some of that to you just so we can kind of get some of the stuff out of the way. Some of the things I've added and that way when I start playing with it in the next episode that hopefully comes out tomorrow. You can't stress that enough. I hope I can actually do it. I am running the one time, so we'll see. But... If I can, that way when I start messing with some of the new stuff, you don't actually freak out. Well, not, you're not that you're going to freak out, but you, you don't question, you know, where it all came from or what happened. Uh, I, can, I can just start playing with it and you're going to know where it came from. Uh, so, yeah, that's a thing. Anyway, um, the first thing that I want to mention is I want to go ahead um, to creative mode. So I can actually get a lot of this stuff. In ra oh, uh, lag, lag. Oh, great. And that was a crash, apparently revolving around the bounding box mod that I showed you before, which I, <laughs> I almost tried to turn on because, yeah, but I took it out. For now, I have it turned off. I need to track down exactly what that issue is. Um, it says something about a concurrent mod, something, something. I think for now, I'm going to remove the bounding box mod uh, just because it's going to conflict with things. If I run into any other issues, we'll have to see. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Right now it's off and it won't be in the next update. It'll be removed in the next update, but it shouldn't hurt anything. Uh, and later it'll probably be added back. But in any case, uh, the first thing is that one, I, yes, I am in creative two. I don't have any items and three, this is a creative world. This is a copy of my original world. So anything we do here will not be reflected in the real world. This is just so I can show you about all the updates that are no longer over to the right. I need to copy them over into this world. Uh, so that way I actually have my own little road guide, road map to what we're going to be working on here in a little bit. But uh, you'll also notice that I no longer have shaders. This is due to an AS bug, astral sorcery. It's not really a bug. In that Astral Sorcery adds its own sky textures, uh, which, well, at night at least. Let's see if they're any different. See if you can actually tell. At, or I said day. Pa! I meant night. Okay. Um, you can't really uh, tell, I guess, that it's actually Astral Sorcery sky. I guess they don't change it a whole lot. But these, you see the special little twinkling of the stars. That shape is actually an Astral Sorcery shape. Uh, they use it elsewhere in their mod, such as Astral. Uh, if we go into, say, one of these constellations, you'll see the twinkling of these stars right here is kind of the very similar shape. Uh, and if we use the looking glass or the telescope, we can actually look for certain constellations at night. Uh, and this is what the mod is based around. And again, there's, there's one right, right there, actually. 
um, that I, I kind of don't think I can trace. Oh, yeah, you can, which is very difficult to do, apparently. I don't know how to do it. It's better to get a telescope. We're just going to get the telescope later, and we'll do that later. That's just ridiculous. Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, AS adds its own sky textures for nighttime, and that conflicts with shaders. I would rather keep AS in the pack, at least for now, than deal with shaders, because shaders also cause other problems, such as severe FPS drops. Granted, that's okay for me, but for a lot of people, they don't have a strong enough com computer to handle a modded mod pack, uh, modded mod pack, <laughs> a mod pack and shaders. And it's just, I think it's just kind of better that I play with a similar setup that, uh, you know, my viewers would be able to play with. So that way, if they do decide to jump in and play with me, uh, I, I, it won't, mine won't look a lot better than yours or, or theirs just because I can have shaders and you can't. Um, along with certain, certain other things, I just, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, shaders are cool and all, but I think maybe they're better off for one use. If I build something really, really cool, be like, hey guys, I want to check this out in shaders. Boom, checked it out in shaders. Now we're going to turn them back off kind of a thing. But anyway, let me go ahead and get the notes copied over so we can start this little update procedure here. Hopefully I can get to all the new mods. And uh, those of you who are still here, you're interested to see what's there. So that's cool. we got some really, really cool things coming up uh, as far as the mods are concerned. We're going to jump right into it here in a second. The first one I wanted to mention is Simple Storage Network. Now, most of you remember, well, I say most of you, some of you at least, Remember that I used to have easy storage in an earlier version of Halfway Modded. Um, but upgrading to 1.12.2, Minecraft version that is, uh, easy storage was not updated. So I had to change everything out for regular chests. And this ruins things because I love my storage thing, right? I love my storage capabilities. I like having one screen to access everything. Well, this is where Simple Storage Network comes in. Uh, but it's not overpowered. Um... At least I don't think so. Some of you might. But what you have is just a few blocks here. A lot of you know the upgrades. This just applies to certain import, export cables, or um, perhaps, what was the other one? Attached inventory. Yeah, probably that as well. Uh, so pretty much just the import and export. And you know what they do. You, you attach those to the cable like normal, and it will allow you to put things into the system or take things out of the system automatically just by, you know, attaching those to a chest of some kind. But... Uh, what you need in order for this to work is you need a storage network master. Okay. You need one of these per network. So one, each screen you want to look at, say that guy, you need one of them. Any more than that, I think it breaks. Uh, and then you just attach these simple little cables here, storage cable, and you go boom, 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 boom. Okay. Connect to my network, blah, blah, blah. Um, now you want to do storage link to all of your chests. Boom, boom, boom. Right? And you can do the same uh, over here as well. Boom, boom, boom. And now these six double chests are now attached to this inventory. So if I click here, I can see all of the items inside of those chests, which is very, very cool, very, very handy, and I love it a lot. And then, uh, like, like I was saying before, if I go into a chest here and I just say, okay, boom, uh, and we, we attach an import cable, right? Now anything I put into this chest is going to get imported right into the system. Now, when it gets imported, it randomly places it into it, any chest that it can find. It may circle it. It may not. I'm not exactly sure how it chooses what chest to put things into. But when you have one front face to the whole network, does it really matter how the game decides to import it? Aren't you just happy to have one of these? You know, just kind of a thing. Anyway, so that's kind of that deal. And likewise, you can also attach an export cable, and things will pop out from the network. I think you have to have some kind of a filter in this guy uh, to tell it what to out export. But uh, things will populate into the chest once you do that, which is really kind of handy. Really, really cool. Now, for the purposes of this next one, it's a simple concept. Of course, you already know just by the name what it does. Say you have a whole lot of noisy mobs here that just won't be quiet. First of all, you need to choose whitelist or blacklist. Basically, what this means is that if you have whitelist, anything in the list is the only sounds that are allowed. If you have a blacklist, the ones in the list are the only ones that are canceled out. So what we want to do, we're going to do a blacklist. We're just going to do a huge range because we can. We're going to add. All right. So now this 
basically is a list of every single sound that is currently loaded into the game right now. So if you want to say mute villagers, you can type in villager and you can choose the sound. I don't know. I don't know which one. Probably the zombie villager uh, trading. You can kind of go up perhaps. Villager no. Er okay. Villager ambient. Probably this one. You could also kind of choose, you know, which ones you want <laughs> in case you want multiples. And you can add all of them to the list. So now, as soon as whatever sound is currently playing ends, it will cancel out the rest of them. As you can hear, there are no more villager sounds. They are done. And what I mean by as soon as that sound ends is that a lot of you who know a little bit about files know that when you start one... Uh, sound file in a game, it doesn't tend to stop until it's over. So after the full duration of that audio clip plays, that's when it starts to cancel. It cancels the starting of audio clips, not necessarily right in the middle of them. It just stops them from playing in the beginning. So that's kind of a thing. And I say that like that because Astral Sorcery actually has a very long music that plays for the attunement table, which is actually the reason I put this in. A buddy of mine was playing with it a little bit in this mod pack and he got all the way to the attunement table and it made such an obnoxious noise that I really, really had to remove it. So here you go. Super sound muffler for the win. Just a side note. It also has a necklace you can wear that does the exact same thing. So it mutes all sounds around you, which is kind of perfect for a lot of reasons. And just to prove that it does actually get rid of only the sounds you select, you can hear the zombie, but you cannot hear the villager. And now you can hear the villager because he just turned into a zombie villager. That's hilarious. I love it. This next portion, I actually want to combine with another mod. Okay, the next one is Extra Alchemy, which is very, very cool. It adds a lot of potions. A lot of them. And uh, very, <laughs> there's a bunch of them that are very, very, very cool. Uh, for example, this guy right here, Splash Potion of Fuse. Check this out. Nine, eight, okay. <laughs> that guy must have got a shorter duration. But after the timer... Uh, ends, the dude explodes, which is really cool. It doesn't do, do a huge amount of damage, which means it's not overpowered. It's not going to instantly kill anything. It's just really interesting and really, really cool. Um, and then there's another one, for example, Splash Potion of Gravity. If we go into here and grab ourselves out a little bit of a ghasty ghast, watch this. Oh, I missed him. Hold on. Watch this. <laughs> oh, hold on. There we go. What direction is he heading? I do believe he's sinking. Oh, no, he's not. What? Hold on. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Airborne entities are dragged downwards. You're supposed to be sinking, thing. Why are you not sinking to the ground? Is it because it's a splash poster or something? Am I supposed to shoot you with an arrow or something? I don't know. It's a gas. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, I guess it, it doesn't last very long, apparently. Anyway, it, whatever. You get the idea. There's a lot of potions to mess with. They're all supposed to work. I don't know why that one didn't. Um, but I was playing with a bunch of them, and they all seem to do pretty well. Uh, if, worst case scenario, you make one, and it doesn't work. Uh, dart. But they're really cool to play with. Um, for example, this guy right here replenishes hunger and saturation as long as you can see daylight. So in the daytime, you can actually do photosynthesis. But it actually says in the, in the book or, or in the documentation that that is not a good way to get hunger. It's only meant to stave off hunger long enough for you to get to an alternate or a better food source. Uh, so it's not going to fill your bar up completely. It's only going to slightly make it a little less painful to be starving to death. So it's kind of one of those deals. In all of these potions, they don't require their own brewing stand. They all can be brewed in the regular one. They're just added recipes into it. And it's, I, it's just great, guys. It's really, really cool. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Now, I did say I was going to combine this with another one. And there is a reason for that. I just kind of spaced and 
didn't do it. But basically, the one I wanted to do is actually the, uh, where is it? Placeable items mod. This guy allows you to place 3D renders of items on the ground, meant for decoration purposes only. However, some of them actually have extra effects if you interact with them. For example, uh, I'm not going to get the, that bucket back because I'm in creative, but the bucket... You can add water in and take water out, or lava, or milk, I believe. And uh, it's a pretty nifty little way to do that. It's pretty cool. I'm liking that. Uh, this guy right here, bloop, turns into a snow layer if you walk on it. Because, you know, if, if it were an actual snowball, it would do something similar. These guys here allow you to drink the potion if it's on the ground. Now, there's a, uh, a note about this. Just right-clicking doesn't do anything. You actually have to right-click enough. I think, I don't know if you can hold it. We're going to test that out in a second. But you have to right-click enough until it actually gives you the effect and empties the bottle. Yeah. You see, now it kind of did that and it should have given me combustion, actually, I think. <laughs> it was supposed to, but it didn't. And then you have, you know, fire resistance. And you see I am actually getting these effects. Uh, and then we can even get this one. And now I have Fuse. So here in a minute, I'm about to blow up. I'm in creative, so I didn't blow up. <laughs> but you get the idea. These effects do work. They're going to be fine in survival. It's just because I'm creative that uh, everything's messing up. But you get the idea. It's a very, very cool thing. So you got to mess with... Uh, yeah, um, that would be good if you actually did the right command there, Zook. Uh, but... Yeah, it's a really, really cool thing that you just gotta, gotta play with a little bit just to see what items you can place on the ground, what items you can interact with, what potions you can make. There's some really, really cool stuff in there that, uh, that I think you're gonna like if you, if you are indeed playing this pack. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it for sure. Now, here's another thing that I really kind of wanted to mess with. Uh, with Sophisticated Wolves, we still do. We missed, we actually... Um, got rid of ours because we changed worlds. But I wanted to see what the other wolves actually looked like because all of ours were the regular ones. These are the only ones we found because we didn't go to the right biomes to find the other ones. What was that about? Did you see that? What was that? Oh, the llama spit at him, didn't he? Stupid llama. Anyway, so uh, the other thing, let's get some bones in here. I think you, you tame them the same way as far as I know. Uh, you still tame them with bones. So we're going to do this. We're going to tame one. I want to show you this other thing. It's kind of an addition to it. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Choose the five types of food which dogs eat. Uh, sure. You're going to eat them all. I, I, uh -huh. Whatever. Anyway, so the thing I wanted to do is actually test out some of these armors. You can now store armor on wolves. Now, apparently you can't see it. Uh, I don't know why. I think that's probably some kind of an issue with sophisticated wolves. I'm thinking on a regular wolves, it would actually show what it is. But you can kind of see the armor. You got 6 armor, 12 armor, 15 armor. These guys actually get more armor than we do. 12 armor for gold. That makes sense because it's lower than iron. Uh, and then 20 armor and 2 armor toughness. It's crazy. It's really, really cool though. Uh, so you can actually armor them up. And... In here, they actually have their own inventory. Uh, I think it's, is it up here? There's an inventory somewhere that you can actually give them. I don't know how that works, <laughs> to be honest. But it is wolf armor and storage. There is a way to give them storage. I just don't know what it is. I haven't experimented with that too much. Uh, but there is a way to do it. We can play with that later. You can play with it yourself. The next two are also a pair bundle. Loot Tweaker and Player Storage. Now, first and foremost, Player Storage is kind of an OP storage method. I am well aware of this. I know those of you who have experience with it will kind of say that kind of a deal. But I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, the limitations that I added into the mod in order to make it more fair. Uh, first of all, let me get to this. That's the maximum you can store. You can only store 2,000 items in here, which is not even a, a full double chest uh, worth of items. So it is more storage, but it's not a huge amount of more storage. Now, the mod itself, there are a lot of slots here. Yes, it is expandable. Okay, and by default, these apples that allow you to expand it, uh, number one, they give a lot more than, what the, than the values here. For example, the first one is actually double that by default. 
3,200 is the first apple. Uh, the amount of slots or the amount of items extra you can handle with it. This one is like 20,000. This one's like 100,000. And this guy's 2 million, which as you can see is the same. I left this one the same, but I will show you there is a change to it. We're going to get to that in a minute. But what I did, and they're very, they were very easy to craft as well. Um, they were basically, this one was just iron blocks around an apple, gold blocks around an apple, diamond blocks around an apple. And you could basically just do that. So you really did have infinite storage. It was very, very, very easy. But what I did is I actually removed the recipes for the earlier three apples. I nerfed them a lot. I halved this one and I took away a lot from the second and third apple just to make it more fair. The third apple is still very, very good uh, in comparison to, you know, say the first or, or whatever. It's still 20,000 items. It's a lot, but it's also very, very rare. Uh, the only way to get this is that there is a 5% chance to get one off of an Elder Guardian. Elder Guardians are very rare. There's only so many of them. You have to find a fort or uh, an ocean monument in order to do it. And there's only three of them in an ocean monument. So you have three chances to hit a 5% chance with this guy. You can also get one from the ender dragon, which you can spawn multiple times, but it's still only a 5% chance. So you'll have to spawn him a lot just to get one of these things. Uh, so they are very, very rare. And of course, this guy is a little more 23% chance. And this guy's a 72% chance. You are guaranteed to get one of them from each of these bosses here, the Elder Guardians or this, and also the Batania bosses, uh, the Gaia Guardian 1 and 2. You can also get them from that as well. I'm still working on adding them to other bosses and stuff because I do want other things to have them. But for now, that's, that's all that there is. It's also added to dungeon chests. The first one is added to all things, right? Mine shafts, uh, desert temples, um villages, all that kind of, e even the easier ones like, like, the, uh, dun like the desert temples. Uh, but the middle one is not available in all of those same places. It's only available in a few of them. And the easy ones do not include it. You have to go to a slightly more difficult place in order to get the second apple. And then the third apple is even more rare. I think there's only a few places. End cities, stronghold libraries, and woodland mansions. So those are the only places you get, get this stronger apple. And it's still a 3% chance in each of these places. So it's still very, very rare. Um, and that's what I'm doing to nerf it. Now, this last guy, if you get him, it's 2 million items. You can store pretty much everything. The, our old easy storage, we only had 160,000 and I could have stored everything that I own already. So 2 million is basically unlimited storage. You can store whatever you want. Uh, but this guy is very difficult to get. I changed the recipe. Originally, it's the golden or it's a regular apple with four nether stars. I made a golden apple just to make it a little more tough on that aspect. A necromantic prime. This guy is all the way at the end of astral sorcery. It's one of the final items you get. Uh, it requires a fully powered altar. It, you just have to go really, really far into that mod in order to get this guy. And that's just one of the items. Then you have to do the Ghast Queen Tears, which means you have to go all the way into uh, Netherex, find one of those Ghast places that I already mentioned, that I found one of, and spawn the Ghast Queen and beat her. She is difficult. She is hard to beat. But you have to do that. And not only do you have to do that, you have to at least get her to drop her item and you have to catch it. You have to remember, it's still a gas. These things can fall into lava and be destroyed or fall on the ground into fire and be destroyed. It's still in the nether, still hard to grab after you've killed her. So it's a very good chance you're going to lose this, this item right here. I found a use for it. Netherex has yet to add a use for this. I went ahead and threw one in because I thought it was a good addition. Then you have two Gaia Spirit ingots, okay? You have to go through Batania all the way to the end pretty much because you need Terra Steel. So you need to kill the Gaia Guardian in order to get enough Gaia Spirits to turn Terra Steel, which is already difficult to get, into Gaia Spirit ingots and uh, use two of those. So you need two Terra Steel. So you're going to need at minimum one full monopole in order to get two Terra Steel ingots. It takes that much mana just to get one of these guys. It is very, very ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I say ridiculous. It's part of the mod. It's just kind of how it works. So I made it unbelievably hard. So while you do have this unbelievably amount of storage in here, it will take a while and a lot of playing and a lot of exploration or a lot of mod progression in order to get it to a point where it is overpowered. 
But I believe eventually, once you get far enough into the mod pack, you should definitely be able to hold everything you own on you. I think that is a worthwhile achievement. Once you've played enough and gotten so far into the pack, uh, I, I think you deserve something like that. So that's why that's added. That's why that's here. And uh, Loot Tweaker is what allowed me to change all of these things uh, and, and make them available in certain places like the bosses dropping the apples and finding them in end cities and so on and so forth. Loot Tweaker is the, the mod that did it. It's a background mod, nothing you're actually going to see in game, but uh, just something that helped me do what I needed to do to get things done for the player storage mod. Okay, the next two. Journey Map is now set to a release version. There were just some bugs in there, like seeing uh, the waypoints in all dimensions rather than just the one that they were set in. Uh, there's still a crash, I think, and that was all due to the fact that we were still on a beta version of it, so I set it to a release version that should be a lot more stable, just so we don't have any more crashes with Journey Map, and uh, we can figure that stuff out. Uh, AS configs back to default. I already told you about this because Astral Sorcery adds its own sky in. Uh, I removed shaders and put the configs back to bring back its sky because originally I had it removed in order to make my shaders work. So I, I changed the configs back and I removed my own shaders. It's just kind of a thing. The next one is Dungeon Tactics, which adds quite a few things. If we go into here, you can kind of see some of the items. It does add weapons, it does add armor, it does add a lot of weird things that are pretty kind of cool, like rocket pants, for example. That's just freaky. It's not actually a method of flight. It's just a method of going up. And I'll see if I can demonstrate that in creative. I'm not sure if it'll let me. And then flight goggles let you fall slowly. So they're not like cheaty items. Uh, they're not overpowered by any means. You don't even get creative flight in it. You just kind of, <laughs> you, you can move in mysterious ways. This mod is more about the different and the weird rather than like OP. Uh, there is one thing that's kind of OP, but it's a lot of fun and I think it's not useful at all. So I think it's just a lot of funny rather than a lot of OP because nobody's actually going to use it, I don't think. Uh, but it's still pretty cool. Um, you do have some spells in here which are pretty, pretty good, but they're also very, very expensive. So that's what makes them balanced in the mod. Uh, and I would go over that, but we'll probably get into it in the future anyway. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. But you have, uh, these are the items that I like to mention. Okay, we're going to put on the rocket pants and the goggles first. I don't know if this is going to let me do it. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, that's, that's the rocket pants. You push space and you just kind of go up really high. I don't know how to fall slow though. I thought this did something. I don't, maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. Something makes you fall slow. But anyway, um, that's not what I wanted. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to show you the rest of these things because they're actually really, really cool. This guy is kind of OP, but again, I don't think anybody's going to try to use this because it's very hard to control, but it technically can get you long distances in the air. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of a, bl a, a boom method, right? You can go really, really high. I know it does have a durability on this thing, so it's kind of interesting. And unless you get pretty good at aim and actually land in water, you're probably going to die from fall damage. Uh, if you use this thing for any kind of flight. But really, if, if we'll just say a cactus is trying to attack us, because, you know, that's totally a thing that can happen in Minecraft, and you're like, holy crap, boom! And then you're just kind of blown backwards uh, away from him. Or, or like a creeper, for example, would be a lot better of an example in reality. So you're like, oh crap, he's about to explode, boom! And you kind of back up out of his range, and I think you also blast him back a little bit too. I don't believe the mod authors intended you to kind of look down and do what uh, people in the TF2 world call a rocket jump. Or probably other gaming worlds as well. I don't mean to insult anybody. The regular pot shot's kind of cool, but it just throws a little thing. It doesn't really do that much damage. It's kind of like a bow, only not as good. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. The powder keg is pretty interesting. Uh, this guy just kind of goes boom if you do it. I'm thinking a regular redstone signal would work. I think, I want to say it will. I'm not 100%. Oh, yep, it works. That That's the keg for you. 
Uh, and you can also obviously do remote devices, put a longer timer on it, because apparently it doesn't even sizzle like regular TNT. It just explodes. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the fan is also pretty cool in that it does blow mobs, but that's its distance. One, two, three, four. There's only four blocks directly in front of the thing that you can't actually walk in. It's only four blocks, so you'd have to use a lot of these in uh, regular mob grinders and such. But even, the, even still, I don't think a fan is too far out of the question. This is modded after all. There should be a better way to push mobs than using, you know, water. So that's a thing. Anyway, then you also have the cluster grenades, which are kind of interesting. You hold it down, and then you shoot it. And there's actually a couple of them in there. And you kind of hear the, the multiple explosions. And then, of course, there's the single version as well. Now, these guys, I don't even think... They don't do a whole lot of damage. They don't hurt the terrain, so they're very, very underpowered here. Uh, and as far as the charms, there are a lot of charms in here that I assume... Just remove effects. I don't know how OP they are as far as how to make them, like the recipes or anything. I don't know if it's easier. I don't. Even, I guess you you can't even make them. I think you have to find them, so that makes it even more fair. Uh, and plus, they're definitely going to have some kind of a durability as well. But I'm thinking if we go like that, we should have some poison. And you're going to use this like a bow, and you do that, and it didn't even work. Do you have to hold it? Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So it removed my poison and it dinged. And I'm assuming that would have taken away durability. It says there, max durability two, which means you probably only get two uses of the charm before it breaks and you have to find another one. So again, not very OP at all. Just really, really cool. Um, and then you have something else. Like there's some really, really cool ones here. Um, this one is kind of OP. The rest of these, let's see. You just explode. That's easy enough. Fire, you're set on fire. Slime, you're bounce. Fume, uh, I, th I don't know what that one, I'm not sure what that one does. I don't know what that one does. Port just kind of teleports you. You can actually be teleported into blocks and suffocate, which is kind of interesting, but it's not very useful because it's all random. Sometimes you're just teleported above ground to a different spot, so it's a thing. Ambush trap is the one we're about to show you. It's a little bit crazy. And spectral trap just acts like you were hit with a spectral arrow. It gives you that freaky outline that people can see you through walls and stuff, which is kind of cool, but still not very useful. Um, but this guy here is kind of OP, and this guy here is kind of OP. Uh, but again, I don't think they're useful. I don't think there's a real way to use them in any kind of a way that's cheaty. But uh, here you go. This is the ambush plate. You walk over it... And a few mobs are, spawn mobs are spawned. The reason I say it might be a little cheaty is because... Get off. Get out of here, stupid. You can do it a lot of times. You can continue to do it over and 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 over again. Um, so you can get a lot of mobs that way. This guy, however, is just really, really weird. These guys... Come on, go away, blindness are basically attack chickens. And this is one of those things I have absolutely no idea what they could possibly be used for that you would... I, I don't know how to use these in a way that would be cheaty. I, I just don't. It's just freaky. It's weird. It's cool. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely... It's not in line with halfway modded for sure, but it's so weird. And I don't know how to do it. So it's just kind of one of those things. Because it can't really be used in order to cheat, I'm okay with it being in the pack. And the same with the ambush plate. Just a side note, after a while they actually just poof. They just disappear. And they don't drop anything when they die either. So they can't be used for that, guys. Okay, so we're going to see if we can get through the last few pretty quick. Because I am running low on time. But... The first one is the XP block, which is down there all the way at the bottom, global XP. All this really does is if you shift click, um, I don't even know if you can shift click with an item or not, but just empty hand. Oh, right. First of all, you need to make sure you change one key here from the carry on mod. You need this to be a different key, not shift. I use the left alt, which tends to be the le L menu in here, and that's a much better key because it's rarely used by mods. But anyway, so uh, you can basically, okay, there we go. You can place it down and you can shift right click on it and it'll store all of your items. And then as you can see, 
you can punch it to get your 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 levels back or whatever, um, or or not. <laughs> I guess maybe you right click. Is it just a regular right click? I'm not sure, but there's a way to get your levels back. Trust me, I, I was doing it all the time. Yeah, okay, you just right click. So you shift right click to deposit all of your levels, and then you right click for the ones you want back. It's just a way to store your XP. Uh, it's not liquid form. There's no orbs involved. It's just a number. So it's it's pretty cool. It's an interesting thing. It is modded again. I think you should be able to store your XP. I think that should be a vanilla thing, actually. Storing XP should totally be a vanilla thing. Uh, we're going to go to expanded bone meal next. Now, this guy right here is actually really, really cool in that it expands what bone meal can be used for. For example, we're actually going to do something like cobblest cobblestone um, in here. If we do cobblestone and use the bone meal on it now, it'll turn it into mossy cobblestone or moss stone, I guess. Um, and you can also do it again <laughs> in certain cases. And it'll actually turn it into dungeon tactic things. Um, now, the, these things can't actually be planted on sand, so it's kind of a little bit of a bug. That's kind of cool. It's a fade leaf that just teleported me in the air or, and that guy too. <laughs> which is kind of interesting actually, but it is what it is. Uh, so you get the idea. This guy right here actually gives you slowness. So these, these things are kind of interesting in that they, they do things, but uh, regular bone meal on regular grass still gives you the regular old grass. So don't worry about that. It's just kind of when you right click on like moss stone, for whatever reason, gives you dungeon tactics things. If you really wanted it, there's a pro tip for you in this mod pack. Uh, but yeah, it also works on, for example, sugarcane. Now, I would show you here, but it's already three tall. It does not allow the thing to grow like super tall, so it's not a cheaty way to get things. Uh, it only grows it to its available maximum that it can grow in the wild. For example, if we place one down and then bone meal it, it will go to two and three, but it will not go higher than three. Uh, and the same with the cacti here. It'll, it'll go up to two and three, but it will not go higher than that which is a very cool thing. It just allows bone meal to work on more things, which again, I think that should be in vanilla anyway. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The next thing, let's see, placeable items I've already gotten into. Extended info. You see the extra stuff over there that says hardness two, blast resistance six, so on and so forth. It's a different color, uh, the text is. That is the extended info. It just gives more information about things. I like it there. If you don't like it, you can actually push uh, insert. It will add it into there or you can press tab to remove it completely. So it is removable, which is why I add it. For those of you who don't care about the extra information, uh, it is possible to remove the thing. So it's really, really cool. Anyway, so uh, the next thing, let's see, extended info, placeable items, expanded bone meal, Xnet is good, mending fix, and the hunting dimension. So I gotta do the mending fix. Uh, so as a lot of you know, when you have multiple items on that allow for mending, the game will try to mend one of them. If that item, it, and it'll choose this randomly. If that item is already fully repaired, then it will go into your experience bar. Well, this mod changes that behavior. Instead of choosing one at random, it will choose one at random that is not already full durability. So you no longer have to take off all your gear and put only that one thing you want to repair in your offhand or whatever. You don't have to do all that rigmarole. You can just kill the enemies regular and it will automatically uh, heal any of the materials in your inventory that have mending that need to be healed. Well, not in the inventory, what you're wearing or in your hot bar, what you're holding offhand, so on and so forth. So it's a really, really cool thing. I think, again, that should be in, in vanilla Minecraft. Uh, but there you go. Uh, Xnet and hunting dimension. Let's do the hunting dimension first. First of all, you have the hunting dimension frame. This guy right here, you get four of them just with a bunch of wood and an arrow. So it's a very cheap way to do it. But basically what it is, is you put this in the same shape as a regular old nether portal. You can actually light it with flint and steel as well. But the cool way to li li light this thing is actually with a weapon. You go into a weapon. I can't kill that thing like that. Okay. You go with a weapon and you right click and that will load the portal. Then you can go inside the portal. You see that I'm not teleporting. You actually have to push shift. Now by pushing shift, you go through this dimension. The hunting dimension has harder mobs. They have more armor, more damage, um, and they actually have more health and everything as well. You see every item, every creature in here. I know it's very, very dark for you guys. Actually, let's go ahead and do this real quick. Effect, Zog, Night, Vision, a big number. Boom. Okay. So, 
You can see that every creature in here actually has a little bit of armor here. So they're all very, very hard. But they all have a little bit better drops. About that that you would get if you had looting one on your sword by default. Um, and you can put your mob farm in here. And it's a lot easier to do that because there are fewer caves. Fewer underground caves in this place. So the above ground is always going to get it. It's also permanent night. So it's also very, very good for that as well. Are we going to do it in our series? I don't know, but it is a very good location for an automatic mob farm if you wanted to put something like that together. It will also keep the lag out of the overworld in case you wanted to do something like that. But that's really about all this, this dimension offers. is just a harder but better set of mobs for you to grind out and get more, more of the things you need out of it. Uh, and it's really, really cool. Also, now, so we have the chest here. I am so trying to hurry. I think I'm already pretty far over time, but it is what it is. Um, so you have two chests, okay? You want to either transfer items or liquid. Liquid can be done the exact same way, and I'll show you that here in a minute. But basically what you do is you take two of the connectors from Xnet. There's only a few blocks in this mod. It's not a huge amount. Um, there's a lot of the blocks are the same. Like you just have the connectors you have the regular connectors of all the different colors. Then you have the advanced connectors of all the different colors. And then you have the cables of all the different colors. And the different colors just allow you to run two networks side by side without them connecting like that. Uh, if you had a different color, they would not connect together. But anyway, so what this allows you to do is transmit items, energy, which even though we don't have energy in the pack is still kind of interesting and kind of cool, or fluid. So items and fluid in this pack are what you're going to be transferring. But you take your connector of whatever color you want and attach it to both sides. You put the cable in between and they're now connected. But they are not going to transmit items between each other because you need this guy right here, the controller. You need one controller per connection. And then you put a blue, uh, you know, another connector onto this guy. Now they are all linked together and you will see them all here. So you go into this and you can actually have eight different channels on the one connection, which is really, really kind of cool. So I could transmit energy from one item to the other and then on the next channel go and do fluid from, you know, and reverse the direction of it, which is really kind of neat. But you go in here and you say, okay, I want to transmit on channel one, I want to transmit items. You say create. So now this channel is now set to do items. Channel one is now items. So then you go into here, into the first position. Oh, look at me go. Uh, <laughs> this is not very cool, man. Not how you're supposed to do it. Channel one, uh, item, create. So you go into the first one here, and then you say create. So now you're attaching to this one oak chest right here in this top position. So you go here and you say, okay, I want to pull from this chest. So we're going to extract. And we're going to extract single items or entire stacks, number of ticks for each operation or extract mode. Like there's a lot of custom ability. And then you go to the other one here and you say create and I want you to insert. So I want you to receive it and the same kind of options a little bit there. So then it would go from one item to the other. I'm not sure which way this is actually set to go. Let's try this way first. Is it this way? No, I think it's the other way. Are you active? Did I not set you? <laughs> Look at me go. Um, I don't know. It's supposed to... Oh, yep, yeah, there it goes. It went. I just... I had to give it a second. But you see it did move because I had it in this chest. Um, but yeah, it's basically just like that. And that's how you set that up. Uh, it's a little bit complicated. But again, this is an item pipe and fluid pipe. So I think it should be a little bit complicated. Uh, it should be a little bit more difficult to set up than just connecting two different points together and having it automatically transfer between them. Um, because, you know, halfway style, if it was easy, it would be OP kind of a thing. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's that kind of a deal. We've got that. We got everything there. Uh, more stuff. We'll, I'll go into detail further on in the series uh, in the future, but this episode has already gone on super long and I got to get some things out. So Hopefully I have an episode out tomorrow with regular old progress. Uh, and those of you that stuck around, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the like button if you like the video, if you like the updates, if you like the mod pack. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, do what you do. And I'll see you next time. Peace out, peace.